Now, what exactly is ATM Jack Potting? Most people have only seen it in movies. That's because it was never performed until 2014 in Russia, when an anonymous group created a malware that could disrupt not only a country's financial network, but the entire globe's financial ecosystem. And they called themselves Carbonac. In the middle of the night, a Kaspersky Labs employee received a phone call from a banker of one of the largest Russian banks, and he was apparently so paranoid that he didn't even want to speak about what was really happening over the phone. He insisted on an in-person meeting. Turns out the bank's domain controller was sending out sensitive information to other servers located in China. Now, if you don't know, a domain controller is the most important server of any company, and if someone can somehow get into this domain controller, they will have full access, full control over the company. Everything from accessing customer data, removing and adding funds from accounts, even swiftly moving millions of dollars through the SWIFT banking system. So if the bank's domain controller is doing things the bank doesn't know about, the bank has a very big problem. Now astonished by how someone was able to hack into the domain controller of a bank worth billions of dollars, the Kaspersky Labs employees went to work and they started analyzing every single network, phone, and computer that was connected to the internal banking network. They began to notice how some of the bank's computers had screen sharing software installed known as VNC. And upon questioning the bank, Kaspersky Labs began to realize that nobody, no employee of the bank installed nor even used the VNC software to begin with. And so Kaspersky Lab uh, experts began to realize that someone must be trying to spy or successfully spying on bank employees for whatever reason. And to test this theory, he opened up a blank Word document on his computer, right? And he typed out the word hello. He then waited and waited and waited until eventually the computer began to type back. Hello, you won't catch us, they replied. The Kaspersky Labs employees were then dead set on catching these people and they went on to discover that a bank employee received an email from someone claiming to be a legitimate client of the bank. However, this email was completely fabricated. And to make things worse, the email had a malicious uh, Word document file attached to it that contained malware directly from Carbonac. Unfortunately and unbeknownst to the bank employee, he opened up this Word document and the malware activated itself. Quickly installing a VNC backdoor onto the banker's uh, computer. And once installed, the hackers could not only watch but also control the machine, which was then used to infect other computers within the bank's network. And they went on to search for the computer that held the administrator account. Once found, the hackers could then slow down the admin computer by running multiple background programs as possible, hoping that the bank employees would notice and eventually contact IT support, which is exactly what ended up happening. Once IT support arrived, they entered the admin password and began trying to clean up the computer. However, unbeknownst to them, they didn't actually clean anything off the computer, rather just further compromise the security of the entire bank. Thanks to a keylogger, which is a background program that is used to log each and every keystroke made on a keyboard of a computer. The hackers now had the admin password and they could sign into the admin account to further infect the remaining network of the bank. The Carbonat group now had access to everything within the bank's network, but instead of stealing money, they chose to wait and wait. They waited for months while they investigated and stalked the bank's employees until they knew exactly how the bank operated and what security protocols they had in place. Just silently watching and recording everything the bank was doing. And once they had a good sense of the security protocols that the bank followed, that is when the real attack began. Now to begin, they impersonated high-ranking bank executives and manually sent massive amounts of funds to accounts via the international banking system known as SWIFT. Secondly, they then used the bank's e-payment system to send money to their accounts, which was then transferred to other offshore accounts located mainly in China and the US. And these accounts were then drained by the henchmen of the group, which are known as money mules or runners. The next phase of the attack was something straight out of Hollywood movies, because now that the Carbonac hackers had access to the bank's uh, internal network, they were able to remotely control ATMs, making them spit out cash whenever they wanted. And these ATMs were usually in remote locations and the money was again collected by runners. Now ATM jackpotting is just insane within itself, but this next part of the operation is just the most interesting to me. 
The Carbonac hackers would take accounts that had very small amounts of available funds in them and they would inflate these accounts and pocket the difference. Now, when they inflated the account of an elderly Russian man who had only 34 rubles in his accounts when he went to bed that night, he woke up the next morning and realized that he had over 10 million sitting in the same accounts. And even though Kaspersky Lab experts knew exactly how the hackers compromised the bank, they were not able to find any trace that would lead them to the missing 9 million US dollars and the case was eventually put on hold. Eventually, Russian banks, banks in China and banks in the US teamed up with Kaspersky Labs and other cybersecurity specialists, as well as a few experts from other intelligence agencies, and they formed the Joint Cybercrime Action Task Force, also known as JCAT, and started pouring resources into hunting down this mysterious Carbonac group. At first, they didn't discover any clues which would lead them to the hackers until eventually, one of the Kaspersky Labs employees stumbled upon a tiny mistake within the Carbonac code, which then enabled the experts to send a request to the Carbonac command and control server. Now, in basic terms, they sent a very specific message to the server, right? The command and control server. In return, they should receive a very specific response back. However, there was one problem. They had to send this request to a, a Carbonic command and control server without it being intercepted by any other servers. But the problem was nobody knew the digital nor the physical address of this Carbonic server, which meant the Kaspersky Lab scene had to literally scan the entire internet and send this request to every server that was connected to the web, hoping that one of the servers would eventually answer with the message they were looking for. And after about two days of eagerly waiting, they finally got what they were looking for. The Carbonic Command and Control Server finally answered their response. And as a result of this, the Kaspersky Lab experts were finally able to find the real, uh, the physical real address of the server. And it was located, can you guess? In the Netherlands. The Dutch police quickly got their hands on the server and even invited Kaspersky Labs to come help them investigate. But the analysis of the command and control server just revealed even more challenges of this whole operation. Because they realized that Carbonac wasn't just targeting banks in Russia and in Europe. They were targeting financial institutions from all around the globe. China to Bangladesh, uh, Africa to India, even banks in the US. And without anyone noticing, Carbonac infiltrated hundreds of financial institutions, stealing over 700 million US dollars. But after that incident, the investigation got a whole lot more serious. And the JCAP task force was now working alongside other intelligence agencies, including organizations such as the FBI, Secret Service, CIA, and many more. But as the cybersecurity specialists began to close in on the Carbonac hackers, they suddenly vanished without a trace, going silent for months, only to return to commit the biggest mistake of their hacking careers. Taiwan, 2016. The cybercrime group was back to business as usual, but some of their new runners were inexperienced and caused a massive problem for Carbonac. While they were retrieving money from some hacked ATMs, an unsuspected local Taiwanese resident approached the ATM to make a withdrawal as well. As the man approached, the runners got so nervous that they left as quick as possible, leaving behind a stack of over 60,000 NT dollars in the ATM. Surprised by the strange behavior of the two gentlemen, combined with the fact that they left behind a decent amount of cash, the local resident decided to alert the police. The Taiwanese police then began to review the CCTV footage from the ATMs and immediately realized something was off. They acted quickly and before the criminals even knew it, the incident was all over the news was withdrawn illegally. The withdrawals were made in both Taipei and Taichung across 34 ATMs and 20. Now to make things even worse for the Carbonat group, the police had over 500 officers going through all of the CCTV footage that they could and they eventually tracked down the address of the two men. The competence and quick work by the Taiwanese police led to the identification and arrest of 82 suspects. Most were Russian and the rest were from Eastern Europe. Carbonac was now facing some huge problems and even though 19 of the 22 members of the Carbonac group had already fled to other countries, three of them were still in Taiwan, alone, in a country that was hunting them down 
and with millions of dollars in cash. One of the remaining suspects that was still on the run was apparently the leader of this entire operation. And once he noticed that his face was all over the news, he quickly cut ties with the money. Going to a mountainous area of Dungu Park in Taiwan with two bags full of cash, he proceeded to hide the money. The remaining two members of the Carbonat group decided to store their share of the stolen funds in luggage lockers at the Taipei train station in Taiwan. But only a few hours later, two men arrived, picking up the luggage before calmly walking back to their hotel. What they didn't know is that hundreds of police officers were watching them through the Taiwanese CCTV camera network. Once they arrived and left their luggage in their rooms, they went to have lunch at the hotel's restaurants, which is where police were able to apprehend the two men. In a perfectly coordinated operation, police were also able to capture the last remaining member of the Carbonat group that same night. The Taiwanese police were able to do what nobody else could, and even though the two men in custody were only henchmen for the Carbonat group, the Taiwanese police were able to make the first arrest in the Carbonat case, which is where the manhunts for the leaders began. Spain, 2018 Spanish authorities were investigating a criminal organization that was laundering money in Spain. And with the help of Interpol, which is an international law enforcement agency, the Spanish police were able to find out who was delivering the money that was being laundered and who their clients were. And through sheer coincidence, they discovered that one of their clients of the money laundering uh, criminal organization was a Ukrainian uh, computer specialist known as Dennis K. And after uh, thoroughly investigating the matter, it was discovered that he had ties to not only the Russian, but also the uh, Moldovan mafia, and that he had helped coordinate multiple cyber attacks for them. They had been operating since 2013, and while the mafia had provided Dennis with these money mules, he would have to, you know, fork over 40% of all his profits to these Eastern European uh, criminal organizations. Dennis Kay and three other Carbonac members were finally arrested in the port city of Alicante in 2018. Upon raiding their property, boxes full of fine jewelry, two BMWs, a cold storage device uh, known as a Ledger Nano that contained over 15,000 Bitcoins, which at the time was worth over 150 million US dollars. As for the rest of the one billion dollars, it was never found, it was never recovered. Even though Dennis K was allegedly, apparently the leader of the entire operation um, of the Carbonac group. Kaspersky Labs believes there are many more people involved in this as the group is still active to this day and still stealing millions and millions of dollars every single year.